Hi guys, welcome to an MR2 edition of Otto's Garage. Hi, um, I'm just working on the MR2 here and I'm changing the alternator. Um, a little late to the party, but I'm just going to show you what I've done so far. So we've uh, jacked the back up and I've left the wheels on but just basically set it up on some nice heavy oak blocks there and then put the jack under the sump to take the weight of the engine um, and what I've had to do is take off this engine mount um, which basically that sits like that on the wing uh, so you've got three bolts one here one on the other side and one there. They go onto the chassis and the wing. This top one bolts through that hole just there. And you can get to that quite easily. That one up there with the wheel on underneath. That's a 14 mil. Um, the two legs bolt down onto the chassis and they are also both 14 mil. So there's one on this side and one on this side. That's looking at it from the top. This one is a pig to get out. I didn't bother with that and also those three underneath are seriously rusted so they couldn't come out so what I've done is I've taken it off the engine block um, which are the, there's one bolt at the top and then there's two underneath and one down there and they mount into the side of the engine block uh, what you do have to do is move the belt tensioner out of the way so that big long bolt that's coming out originally was up here taken that out swung that clear and I've now pulled the alternator around the corner uh, so what I've got to do now is take off the main feed that's the live straight from the battery and then this little clip in this one here and that should pop out as well and of course what you have got to make sure is that your battery is completely removed uh, or at least disengaged anyway uh, the only other thing that I removed was the canister which is the evap system uh, and that just connected onto these two fuel lines and then two bolts onto the onto the wing down there dead simple uh, so now the issue is get the alternator out and put the new one in so you can see there now i've taken off those two terminals this one's a little 10 mil that's the main feed like we said and then this black one basically just goes into there it's got a little connector at the back if you push it at the top the pin comes out so you squeeze it I should say into itself and then you can just wiggle it loose and it'll pop off the other one on there I believe is for aircon which we haven't got on this car however we have got a little bracket on there which is locating so I think what I'm going to do rather than do much too much messing around I'm going to just disconnect this little nut here take the whole bracket off and that and then on the new one we'll just bolt it back onto there so you can see there we've got the the one with a little squeezy connector and it's got that little lug on the side of it uh, which is the one you need to disengage and then this has just got the, uh, the 10 mil bolt for the main feed so I'm gonna get that put back on uh, connect it up and then we can put the new one in well I've got no doubt in my mind that you could get those electrical connections on the back of that alternator with it still fitted to the engine um, but it has been a damn sight easier being able to get it round the corner and get at them easily. And I've just taken that last one off there now. So we've got three wires and now we can pull the unit out and basically drop the new one in. So I'm gonna do exactly the same. Drop the new one down there, put the connections on it, and then it can go around, twist it around the corner and it can be mounted up. Uh, it just saves having to try and find out what's going on, especially when you, you can only feel, you know, what's going on with these terminals around the back. You can't actually see anything down there. It's the black hole of Calcutta. Well, it's in. So basically, I've just reconnected those terminals. Everything matched perfectly, so that's good. Um, I've got to now just spin it round and get it mounted up on the, um, on the original mount down there. Uh, of course, the other thing that I do need to have a look at, the belt. And you can see on the belt here, there's some right nasty cracking on that. So I would be absolutely foolish to put that back in without getting a new belt on it because that looks like she could go at any time. So that's the next thing I'm gonna to need to do is nip to the factors and grab a new belt for it. But otherwise uh, we'll get that mounted up and then we can um, 
uh, get the engine mount back in place hopefully. There it is with the bottom bolt fixed in um, and then uh, what I'm going to do now is get the engine mount and put back on uh, because one of the top bolts, the top bolt up here, um, that one actually goes through a flange on the engine mount so we need the engine mount in next uh, but everything's connected up that's good news once the engine mounts in we can uh, have a look at getting the tensioner back in its correct place so that's where that long bolt is now that'll move across um, and then uh, we can get a new belt on it the belt can go on after the engine mount there's no reason why you can't change your belt with all the engine mount and the alternator in position so that's simple enough with the uh, engine mount bolted up against the block with those um, three bolts, uh, I have put a little bit of Loctite on those. Um, you can then bolt the other ones, the, 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 the other side of the rubber mount in effect onto the chassis. It's a good idea to get that back one in down there first, I don't think you can see that. Um, but basically, I would get the, the back one in first, get that aligned, uh, and the wing one as well, that one's easy enough. But then this front one, if you get a bar in it, see how it's misaligned there? And you just give the bar a bit of a tweak, it'll pull that across and you can drop the bolt in and that'll all be in the right place. Um, the other thing that does help it, of course, is having that jack in under the gearbox, just taking the tension off the engine, basically. Once you've started to put the threads in there and the bolts, you can then um, let that jack down and then, of course, it'll all align in the correct place and tighten everything up. Right, just a bit of a recap. So um, those bolts that are on that engine, they'll just have a quick run through of the sizes on those. Um, basically, the tensioner bolt down here, um, this one, if you can see that. The bottom one, which which is the basically the, the, the tightener, that's a pivot point basically. So that's a 17. The one above it, which is actually the... Um, you can put a socket on it and get around that way. That's a better view. You can get a socket on this top one here, um, and then that basically when you tighten the socket, that loosens off the, uh, um, the tensioner on the, cat on, the, on the belt there, the drive belt. So uh, you've got a 17, which locks it, and you've got a 19, which is just basically a dead nut for uh, adjusting the tensioner to loosen that off. Um, the one in the wing and the two mounting bolts into the chassis, that one there, and then there's one on the other side which you can't quite see. Uh, they're all 14 mil. The bolts that the um, engine side of the mount fix onto the block, they're all 14. There's three of those in there, two at the top and that long one down the bottom behind the tensioner wheel. Um, 14 there, and then on the back of the alternator, the bottom long bolt, the pivot bolt down the bottom, that's a 14 mil, and the top one up here is a 12, basically, which locates the top of that. So uh, all fairly quite straightforward. Don't bother trying to undo this, it's just a complete pain in the ass. And I didn't bother, some people take the, the three bolts underneath here, or three nuts, I should say, on, on the studs. Some people take those off and, and do it that way, but they were just seized to hell on this, so I just didn't bother with that. Anyway, um, I'm not gonna put the um, crap canister back in. That's our friend over here for emissions. Uh, he's gonna connect up onto these two fuel breathers. That's not going in until I've got that uh, belt on down the bottom. So now it is a trip to the motor factors. Just one other uh, little bit of advice for you. When you're putting those bolts back into that alternator, make sure you and if you put the bottom one in have it really loose you know almost not quite touching at all into the thread because i just did struggle quite a lot getting the uh, top bolt in that 12 mil uh, and in the end what i did is i loosened the bottom one right the way off and then put the 12 mil one in started that up then got the bottom one in, gave it a good shove and a twist and then that engaged the threads on it but if you uh, do like I did and put the bottom one in first and nearly have it tightened up, that top one just isn't going to fit. So um, just have a fiddle around with them. Don't get anything tightened up until everything's aligned and threaded and then you can wind it all home afterwards. Well, that's the new belt put on. Easiest way I've found is feed it all the way through. Uh, don't feed it over the alternator pulley though. Keep that one off slack. And then when you get the, uh, the socket on the adjuster down there, of the spring tensioner, I should say, you push that forward, give it some gentle but progressive 
pressing because there's a there's obviously a damper unit in there and at first it doesn't want to move but just keep it that way it'll go all the way forwards with a breaker bar on it and then you can just hook it over the front of the um, alternator pulley afterwards but if you try and do it any other way it's so twisted down the bottom there you can see how that belt is going around the crank pulley and then around the tensioner here it's uh, it's like a bloody snake in any event she's on so just need to tighten up that bolt down the bottom there and uh, get the battery back on it and the job is a good one kaboosh i hope you found that useful thanks for watching otto's garage catch you on the next episode Stay safe.